today we're going to be talking about left main coronary artery occlusion and what I have on the screen here is a 12 lead that may be indicative of that. What I want to draw your attention to is the ST elevation that we see in AVR and the ST depression that we see in most of our other leads. So if you look at lead 1, 2, 3, AVF, V3, V4, V5, and V6, we see ST depression. So elevation in AVR with fairly consistent ST depression across our inferior and precordial leads could be indicative of a left main coronary artery occlusion. Part of the reason for that is that AVR tends to look specifically at the right ventricular outflow uh, tract as well as the intraventricular septum which tends to be supplied by the proximal parts of the left coronary artery. If you look at that we can also see elevation in V1 which can be indicative of some ischemia to the septum which would further increase our suspicion that this patient is potentially having infarcted tissue around that septal area and the right ventricular outflow tract which again would be suggestive of someone having a left main coronary artery occlusion. So in order to better understand these findings, why when I look at AVR and I see ST elevation and I look to my other leads and see ST depression, should I be thinking about left main coronary artery occlusion? Let's take a look at the heart and some of the different changes, anatomical views, and perspectives on perfusion that we can see. Now that we've looked at the 12 lead ECG and some of the indicators of a potential left main coronary artery occlusion, Let's take a look at the anatomical features that may actually lead to that ST elevation or the ST depression due to a left main occlusion. So remember from what we talked about with the 12 lead findings, left main occlusion may be indicated in someone who has ST elevation in AVR. So this patient would be one who we're seeing a fairly extensive ST elevation in AVR combined with otherwise widespread depression, which is a fairly unique finding and we can look at what is happening anatomically to uh, see why that might be the case in someone who has a left main occlusion. So when we're looking at a left main occlusion, something like this, so uh, this grayed out area here would be the reduction in blood flow from the left main coronary artery. One of the things that we have to remember are that there are going to be a number of vessels that come off of here that are going to supply two important parts of the heart. The first is going to be the intraventricular septum. So we know that some of the vessels that are coming off of the proximal portion of the left coronary artery are going to supply the intraventricular septum. Additionally, another area that we see supplied is called the right ventricular outflow tract. So this is the upper portion of the right ventricle leading into the pulmonary artery that's going to supply uh, blood supply to the lungs. So when someone has an occlusion in the left main or we have a left main uh, coronary artery occlusion, what can happen is we can see the inability of the vessels to come off of the left main to supply the interventricular septum as well as the right ventricular outflow tract with blood. So because of this left main occlusion, we start to see inability of the vessels that are supposed to supply areas of the intraventricular septum as well as the right ventricular outflow tract with oxygen, which can lead to necrosis and ischemia. We know that when we have widespread necro necrosis and ischemia to an area, we get ST elevation in the lead that is looking at that portion of the heart. And in this instance, that is AVR. So if we remember the direction in which AVR looks. AVR basically is pointing the camera or taking a look at the ventricle uh, or the heart in this direction. So what we're seeing is AVR is going to look at the heart in this direction. So this is the camera view that we expect in AVR. And if we were to have uh, widespread necrosis or damage to the tissue in this area, the way in which ions flow would result in ST elevation in AVR. So if I have damage, or uh, widespread damage to the area of the heart in which the lead is looking at, I know I can expect ST elevation. So that's why we see ST elevation in AVR when we're looking at someone who has a left main occlusion. It's because of the ischemia and necrosis to the right ventricular outflow tract, as well as uh, parts of the interventricular septum. Now, the other thing that we see is we can get ST depression in our inferior leads. Now we have to, again, just 
uh, think about the direction in which we're looking at. The inferior leads would be looking at the inferior portion of the heart like this. We're looking at 2, AVF, and 3. So this would be 3, AVF, and lead 2. And these would be looking at the reciprocal portion of the heart. So these leads or inferior leads would actually see the reciprocal changes that we would expect when we have ischemia or necrosis in the right ventricular outflow tract in the intraventricular septum. So as AVR is looking specifically at those areas, we're looking at 2, 3, and AVF, looking at the reciprocal area. So we expect to see the um, reciprocal SDU depression as a result. So what we can expect in our inferior leads is to see the reciprocal depression from AVR. So we're looking at reciprocal depression in the inferior leads because of the elevation that we see in AVR. Now that still doesn't explain why we have ST depression throughout our precordial leads, or why do our lateral and septal and anterior leads show ST depression. And this has to do with the fact that we're reducing blood supply to those areas of the heart. So when we have an occlusion or we're looking at an occlusion forming in the main part of the left coronary artery, that means that the blood supply downstream is going to be reduced. So unless this patient is seeing widespread STEMI, so if this was a full occlusion and we had complete necrosis of all this tissue, then we would expect to see ST elevation in most of the leads. Now that's not the case here because what we're seeing is ST elevation in AVR and depression in our other leads. So that's telling us that the ischemia or necrosis is happening primarily at these sensitive areas and the right ventricular outflow tract and the ventricular septum that are going to be sensitive to occlusions forming in the left main coronary artery. But that doesn't mean that we're not seeing a reduction in blood flow to the areas distal to this occlusion. So typically this is happening when an occlusion is forming. We don't yet have a full obstruction and complete necrosis of that tissue. And what we have to remember is the way in which blood flow flows to our myocardium when we see a reduction in blood supply. So we know that if blood supply was absent, we would get full death of all of this tissue quite quickly. Now, when we have just a reduction in blood supply, what starts to happen is we see decreasing blood supply to the inner layers of the myocardium. So we start to see damage or the inability to supply blood to these inner layers first. So essentially, the deeper into the myocardium we go, the less easy it is to supply blood to those areas when we have an occlusion or reduced blood supply. So what we start to see is sub endocardial infarction of most of the tissues of the left ventricle that are supplied by the left main coronary artery. So that includes things like the septum, the anterior wall, the uh, lateral wall. So we start to get is subendocardial infarction. So we see, we're not seeing transmural infarction yet. We're not seeing full-blown uh, necrosis to the entirety of the ventricular wall. What we start to get is subendocardial infarction of the uh, ventricular tissue. And again, that's because we have reduced, not completely absent blood supply to the areas of the heart or the internal areas of the heart because we start losing perfusion inside or closer to the endocardium before we uh, get all the way out through the myocardium. So we're not seeing yet a transmural MI. We've got this subendocardial infarct that is ind indicative of ischemia to, to those tissues. When we have subendocardial infarction because of the way our ions flow, so we actually can see our ions flowing towards our leads in these cases, it leads to ST depression. So the reason why we would see ST depression in our precordial leads, so when we're looking at the precordial leads, the reason that you would see ST depression is because those tissues are suffering from subendocardial infarct. So that's what's going to give us potentially ST depression V1 to V6. This could also lead to depression in 1 and AVL. So a couple of things are happening here for us to understand. First is that when I have an occlusion forming in the left main coronary artery, there are particular areas of my heart that are sensitive to this occlusion. That includes the right ventricular outflow tract and the intraventricular septum. So these two areas will be prone to ischemia and necrosis as a result of that forming occlusion. Because of that, and because AVR looks specifically at this portion of the heart, I would see ST elevation. We know the reciprocal portion of uh, AVR is going to be 2, 3, and AVF. So I should see ST depression or reciprocal ST depression in those leads. So our inferior leads are reciprocal to the right ventricular outflow tract and the septum. So as a result, if I have ST elevation in AVR, I should see ST depression in 2, 3, and AVF uh, because it's reciprocal in nature. When I look at all of my other leads, so 1 in AVL and V1 to V6, 
the ST depression is the result of subendocardial infarction. So basically, as we have a hard time getting blood through the uh, left coronary artery, the first area of the heart that's going to be impacted is the innermost part or where we see those vessels innervating the furthest, and that's the subendocardial portion of the heart. So basically, we're losing blood supply to these innermost layers uh, before we start losing blood supply to the outermost layers of our vessel. So as a result, we get uh, infarction or subendocardial infarction. And subendocardial infarction will show up on our 12 ED CG as ST depression. So these are the reasons why we see those uh, findings, ST elevation and AVR, and widespread depression in someone who may be having a left main inclusion. So these findings are not completely sensitive uh, for left main inclusion, but they are indicative of the potential for left main inclusion. So when we look clinically at these patients, if they're complaining of ischemic sounding chest pain, if clinically they appear as though they're having uh, a myocardial infarction, it may be this left main occlusion what we're seeing when you have these findings on your 12 lead ECG.